Welcome to the talk. My name is Dustin Yance. This is Design Systems Aren't Hard, but they are complex and also hard. On the internet, I'm known as Millsy Optaf, which is uh, a name I picked in 1998 and uh, just never got around to changing. I've been working on large websites since roughly 2008. I've been working with design systems since we used to call them swatches or even just style tiles. I currently work in design engineering at Indeed which is a job that I think comes with probably the greatest laptop sticker around. So you might be asking yourself, what exactly is a design system? I first saw this graphic from Nate Baldwin in a talk at Artifact Conference, uh, fall of 2019. It really drove home just how many different definitions there are to the term design system, and just how complicated it can be. Each of those circles is an artifact and a team made that artifact, whether it's you know the UI kit, um, the component library, the documentation. Uh, a lot of people don't think about content strategy as part of a design system, but it definitely is. And if you kind of squint your eyes and look at this just right, it kind of starts to resemble, I don't know, like an org chart. Conway's law states, organizations which design systems are constrained to produce designs which are copies of the communication structures of these organizations. It's kind of a long-winded way of saying that products tend to resemble the communication of the teams that build those products. Uncle Dave Rupert has his own law. Your website is a manifestation of your organization's problems. Products tend to reflect the communication problems of the teams building that product. If you take a look at this graphic one more time, we can see that you know, each of these artifacts is coming from a different team, either communicating or not communicating with other teams. Uh, something like documentation, maybe it's owned by a product team or maybe it's owned by a technical writers. Uh, the UI presentation layer could be owned by a UX department, while the actual UI kit and the visual design language is owned by maybe a brand team uh, or a marketing team, teams that, you know, don't necessarily work together on a day-to-day -day basis. And that doesn't really you know, clear things up when you're trying to think about what a design system is. So let's think about it from a different angle. What isn't a design system? A Figma library, that's not a design system. Uh, you know, a Figma library or a UI kit built with some other tool, um, it could have all of your components in it. It could have all of your colors, all of your buttons. Uh, you can show people how your, your menus look. Um, you know, this is going to represent maybe one team's idea of the design system really well, uh, but it may not be perfectly suited to another team. Uh, you know, developers, uh, they like Figma. It's a lot nicer uh, than using some other uh, software at times uh, for a developer to get in and get the data that they need to make the product that they need. Um, but it, it doesn't tell them, you know, it often doesn't tell them things like how things look when they animate or what they look like when a page transitions. So, okay, maybe a Figma library, that's not a design system. Uh, what else? What else is in a design system? A React component library. Uh, this is the kind of thing that developers always want when they're talking about a design system. They want something that lets them do the least amount of work when it comes to building new product, new interface. Uh, a React component library is a great way to share code easily. Uh, it helps you build functional prototypes or even entire products really quickly with a minimum of custom code. But this still isn't a design system. It, it doesn't always say, uh, you know, it doesn't always reflect the flow of a customer through the product very well. It'll show, you know, what a button looks like or what a form looks like, but it can't actually show you what it looks like to go from beginning to end for a customer. So what else? An external website promoting your design system. Uh, you know, I think we all love to, to check out the latest design systems that are being released by some of the big companies out there, the, you know, the Googles, the GitHubs, um, all kinds of really great things to look at, things to learn from. Um, Lightning's been doing really great work with web components. Uh, Polaris is amazing for theming. But these are actually not design systems either. These, these are just kind of a, a snapshot, uh, frozen in time of the system that that company is actually using internally. Uh, a lot of times these public versions that they release, 
they can lag by months or even years behind what is actually being used inside of the company. These are all the artifacts. These are not the system. So what is a design system? At the root, it's an agreement on how digital products are made. That's all. It's an agreement within your team or your department or your company on what your products are, what they look like, and how they work. What kind of agreements are we talking about? We're talking about user interface design, how the digital experience looks. Interaction design, how it feels, you know, when you're actually clicking around, when you're going through and using the software. Uh, content strategy, again, this isn't always super obvious, but this is a huge part of a design system. Uh, we need to know how our digital experience should sound to the customer when they're, when they're reading our interface. And near and dear to my heart, documentation. We need to know how this digital experience is crafted, whether we're designers or developers, uh, whether we're, we're in marketing, it doesn't matter. We need to know the decisions that have been made and why they've been made, and that's documentation. Design systems, unfortunately, they take time. They take time because it takes time to reach an agreement on big things, on small things, you might be surprised to learn just how long it can take to agree about something as simple as a button. You know, just your, your standard primary button can be weeks or months of back and forth and negotiation. Uh, maybe you're testing your ideas and your assumptions in your live product using A-B testing. Uh, this is going to take time. Uh, here are the primary buttons from vi five different design systems. Um, they're all very similar. They're all buttons. They all have text. Uh, you can click them and they do a thing. Uh, but they all have very distinct differences, whether it's color or shape, uh, shadow. Um, sometimes a design system will have, let you put icons on a button. Sometimes it won't. On the internet, the button is one of your primary interaction points with a customer. And that means that a lot of people have a lot of opinions about it inside of your company. Uh, and it's going to be a large source of frustration when you start building a design system. So you need to be prepared for that. So we know they take time, but you know, time is money. And that means that design systems take money. Uh, you can't shortchange this. You, you should take the time to do it right. Um, so why bother? I mean, this seems like seems like a, an awful lot. We've, we've got to, you know, we've got to think about, oh, we have the, you know, agree on buttons. We have to agree on typography. Uh, we have to agree on the tools that we're going to use. So wh what are we getting out of this? And the answer, to borrow a business word, is scale. Design systems are all about it. Um, you're going to get interface design at scale, interaction building at scale, content creation at scale. When everyone on your team knows how a thing should be built, they can just go build it. They don't have to, to stop and think. They don't have to ask questions. They just know. In my current job, I'm working on design systems. And we do uh, a lot of support, more support than you might think. And the absolute number one question we get, how do I do X? How do I use a primary button? How do I use a secondary button in relation to a primary button? How do I invoke a modal? And the number two question, why? This is you know, as important, if not more important, than the first one. Um, to give people the ability to do things on their own, they need to know not only what they should do, but they also need to know why they should do it, so that the next time they encounter a problem, they can apply that rationale and come up with their own answer and not have to come to you. I believe that a design system is a service, not a product. And this uh, it can be difficult inside of companies to convince people of this. Um, they want to treat it like a product. They want to do roadmaps as if it was a product. But at the end of the day, it's not. It's a service. 
Uh, it is providing answers. It is deciding on new answers to new questions. It's you know helping people integrate the design system with a new product or an existing product. Um, you know legacy code bases that power large chunks of corporate websites are very hard to get design systems to work in sometimes, and that is the job. You know treating it like a service. Um, you know, having support channels, having dedicated people in those support channels, people who aren't writing code that day, all they're doing is there to ask questions, answer questions. Because really, you need to answer questions, not write code. Coming back to this picture, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of artifacts here. Um, what do you think is the most important one? What would you guess? You know, I think if, if you come from a design background, you're going to kind of tend towards the ones that are kind of reddish pink, the UI presentation layer or the components or the UI kit. Um, if you're a product person, you're going to be very drawn to the purple. You're going to want to talk a lot about processes. Um, if you come from a brand background where you're thinking about, you know, like the, the holistic look and feel of a company, um, content strategy is going to stick out as well as the visual design language. Uh, if you're a UI person, you know, maybe a little bit of everything. And if you're a developer, I mean, dev standards, that's a big one. So which one's the biggest, the most important? If you only had the time or the money to do one thing and do it well, what should it be? I would say documentation. I think documentation is the single most important piece of the puzzle. A design system we've already talked about is made up of agreements. You need to write those agreements down. You can't just say, oh, well, you know, two months ago in a meeting on Tuesday, somebody said this, so let's do that. You need to have it written down where everybody can see it and review it and understand it and edit it as they need. That is the most important thing you can do. If you have the budget, I would strongly recommend you hire a service designer. This may not be a job title you've heard of before. Uh, I hadn't before I started my current job. A service designer is there to think about people and think about infrastructure. Um, you can think of them as the personification of documentation and customer support. Uh, they may often come from a UI background or a development background, but they are there to think from you know, A to Z about the customer. Uh, they can help drive adoption of new design systems. If you, know, you have a deadline, you need to have a, a design system rolled out by a certain date, they are absolutely invaluable. They are the extroverts to the, to the development and design introverts. They will make the relationships. Uh, they will you know, find the data, convince the stakeholders that need to be convinced. Uh, they are fantastic. And finally, your documentation should change as often as necessary. You shouldn't think of it as set in stone. Um, you know, we're, we're not writing things in spiral notebooks, uh, but you should think about what kind of software that you use when you're writing down your documentation. It should be something that's easy to edit, quick to edit, that everybody has access to. Um, I would recommend not using a Git repository. I think that's a, a common uh, pitfall for teams. You know, developers, they love Git repositories. They love Markdown. Um, but that's not the friendliest for designers or product. Um, designers love things like Figma. They love to write things down in there. That's not the friendliest for a developer. So think, you know, think about something uh, kind of abstracted, something agnostic. Um, I've seen people uh, use things like Notion really well. Um, you can, you know, obviously use something like Google Docs. It's got a lot of great tools. Um, one of the nice things about something like Google Docs is it lets you know who changed something and when it changed, which can be super important down the road. At the end of the day, design systems can be used to help everyone. That's a great thing. When I say everyone, I don't just mean designers and developers, but specifically the users. 
users that aren't always thought about. Design systems give you accessibility at scale. They give you a system that you can be reasonably assured a button is going to work as a button. Links are going to work as links. Animations are going to automatically respect the prefers reduced motion directive. Without having to think about it, without having to write extra code, uh, somebody can simply pull in an animated component and know that it's going to work in an accessible manner. It also gives you inclusion at scale. You can be sure that when you pull in a form field, it's going to accept accented characters. It's going to accept you know, various types of Unicode, like somebody wants to put an emoji in a field, it'll probably work if you've made one form field work that way, they should all work that way. Things like right to left text presentation is just going to work. Uh, this is an incredibly difficult thing to do on just about every product I've ever worked on. Uh, but once you do it once and you do it right, it's really easy to use that across all of the different places where you're displaying text. Um, in, our, in our products at Indeed, uh, we actually have, we are a global company, we have lots of job postings that are mixed languages. And this you know, is a very complicated thing to fix. Uh, but once you fix it once, it's, it's fixed. Uh, if somebody wants to write a job title in Japanese and a job description in English, easy. If somebody wants to write a job title in German and a job description in Arabic, it's done. It's great. So always think about you know, how you can take those hard problems that need to be solved and figure out a way to solve them once for everybody drive that, that scale of inclusion, that scale of accessibility. So, if you learn nothing else from this talk, learn this. If you do nothing else, write documentation. If you can do nothing else plus one thing, hire a service designer. Design systems are hard, and that's the work. And that's okay. Um, there's, you know, in our industry, it's it's really it's really tempting to try and make things easy for ourselves as designers and as developers, at the expense of ease of use for an end user. And we need to avoid that trap. We need to do the hard work. We need to find, you know, the unified methods of working for our teams, so that you can reap the rewards long term. Uh, superior experience is not just for your developers and your designers, but also your end users. Just want to drop some resource links here at the end, uh, some of the, the places where I found some of the information in this. Uh, hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you can take something back and uh, make your team a little bit better. Thank you very much. Have a good day.